Hello and welcome to Local Connection. Join us here at beautiful Granville Island as we take you to enjoy some fun activities for the summer. <laughs> On today's show... Summer is here and it's time to have some fun. Also, the man that helps make Vancouver a great city. The mayor of Vancouver. And hard work pays off for a professional guitarist. See all this and more right now on Local Connection. Hello and welcome to Local Connection, a show about all the great places and people that make the Lower Mainland an amazing place to live. I'm Maria Arias Rosal. And I'm Dominique Armand. We are here at Granville Island alongside False Creek's Racing Canoe Club. Yes, we are, and here the scenery is beautiful. But this isn't the only place where you can find lots of beauty. Up next, Harold Hudson takes us to one of the busiest fishing ports in Richmond. Time to paddle now. Thanks, guys. So, you've made it to the weekend. Now what are you going to do? You could do your usual, or you could come to Steveston. Steveston Village is home to the Gulf of Georgia Cannery, the last remaining cannery in the village. It was originally a canning factory, but is now a national historical site, highlighting the history of Steveston. Steveston was originally called Steves, named after William Herbert Steves. He bought the land in 1880 to develop a town and seaport to rival Vancouver. Beginning as a farming community, it wasn't long before it had its first cannery in 1882. Despite many setbacks with devastating floods, fires, and the decline of the salmon stock, Steveston still survives. Fast forward a hundred years and here is Steveston today. A vibrant community drawing thousands of tourists to its restaurants, boutiques, bakeries and exclusive novelty shops. A more recent addition to Steveston's downtown is Rockinini Coffee Shop, featuring drip coffee and a siphon coffee brewing system which naturally brews individual cups of coffee. Coffee brewer we call the Siphon, which is uh, originally from Germany. We have been in the coffee industry for over 10 years. Right now we have uh, Ethiopia coffee, um, Peru coffee, Brazil, uh, Colombia, Kenya. Okay, what we're doing right over here is we're going to be making a Siphon coffee. When it boils, the pressure is going to build and it's going to push all the hot water up where it can eventually infuse and mix with the coffee. Coffee's kind of churning up over there, so we're really, we're getting all the flavor you can possibly get. Right? Things can mask, things can hide the taste of the coffee. So the cipher is a super precise, super clean way to brew coffee that really brings out those extra notes. Once you've had your siphon coffee, you're ready to explore the shops and services of downtown Steveston. One destination all visitors flock to is Pajos, a floating fish and chip stand offering more than just fish and chips. Pajos has been in Steveston for 27 years. Uh, it was started by a couple of ladies, Pat and Joe, hence Pajos. Pajos uh, batter recipe is a little different than your usual sort of fish and chips English style. It's not so heavy, it's lighter, it's crispy. I mean, we cook everything in uh, vegetable oil, non saturated fat. We hand cut our, our local Kennebec potatoes every day, so you can hear the guy going back there right now, actually. Absolutely. All right, here you go, Sarah. There's fresh Pedro's fish and chips. We've got salmon, cod, and halibut, one of each for you. Amazing. Customers, I think, will tell you that they feel like family, and we like to treat them like family. Yay! Leaving Pajos, you can take a stroll down the pier to the Fisherman's Wharf, where fresh seafood can be purchased.
the patios on the pier are the hot spots during the summer, and catching a sunset with dinner and drinks at the Blue Canoe is a perfect way to end the day. Um, we were going with the name Canoe just because the concept is that lakeside cottage, backyard fun feel. Blue because we do a lot of seafood through the ocean, so it just kind of rolled off the tongue. Um, originally, no one liked it but it's stuck with everybody through the uh, process of finding a name and it works. We do seafood uh, features every day, so they change every day, they're not always the same. It is a great place to sit and have fun with your friends in a nice relaxed atmosphere. Great cocktails, great wines. It is a fun place to be. From a history lesson at the cannery to the coffee shop downtown, followed by seafood lunches and dinners, Steveston Village is an inviting destination for everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Definitely there's a lot to do and a lot to see. For sure, Maria, the fish market, it's a must. I agree with you, Dominique. But unfortunately, overfishing is causing a lot of species of fish to become endangered. But there is a way. Up next, Joanne Lord not only shows us how to shop for fish, but also how to cook it as well. Now, how delicious is that? Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Back to paddling. Yeah. The Daily Catch is Vancouver's first all-sustainable seafood market located on Commercial Drive. The owners, Ryan Johnson and Dylan McCullough, established the company in November 2010 and are the first to provide high-quality seafood. We work alongside the OceanWise program uh, out of the Vancouver Aquarium and they have a group of scientists that determine what species of fish are sustainable and how those species must be caught. So there has to be an abundant amount of them. Uh, the fishing method has to have a low impact on other species. It's a new trend and we're trying to push that new trend because if we want to have fish 50 years down, this, down the road, we're going to all have to take part. Oh. I even got a chance to make a few friends. Can I touch it? Yeah. That is it. <laughs> or maybe not. For a small business, these boys always knew they wanted a sustainable seafood market. We both grew up on the Sunshine Coast and we were always fishing and just hanging out and we're used to nature and the outdoors and good quality seafood where we come from. Ryan got to roll up his sleeves and sharpen his knives to show us how to fillet a fish. All right, so what do we do first? Do we just chop it up? Use a nice sharp knife, some bend to it. This is a fillet knife. And you go right behind the gill and this fin here. I'll cut down carefully until I feel the spine. And then I'll twist the knife around and do my first fillet. So this is the meat, this is the good part. This is the good part, yep. What? That's about the end product. Wow. Now that we have our fish, we can cook it too. Right here at the Dirty Apron on BD Street in Vancouver. So let's go inside. Dirty Apron Cooking School is a uh, amateur cooking school where we focus on an individual hands-on experience where you come in, you watch a demonstration, um, and then you go back to your station and you cook the exact same thing that you've watched and then you get to go have the dining experience as well. And we always say toast burners are welcome all the way through, you know, we see everybody all the way through to the, the uh, accomplished home cook and, and sometimes even some professionals come in and just to see what we're doing as well too. Chef Takashi gave me the opportunity to get my hands dirty and cook up my very own fish. The, the fish that we bring in is ocean-wise, um, and a lot of the, the meats that come in are, um, or, um, try to be organic or, or when they can be, um, but usually uh, local as much as we can do that too as well. I highly recommend you join a class or come check out the deli at 540 Beatty Street in Vancouver. Also, make sure to check out The Dirty Apron online at www.dirtyapron.com. From Vancouver's local eateries, The Daily Catch, and The Dirty Apron, for Local Connection, I'm Joanne Lohr. 
Wow, that looks really tasty. Yes, it did. And now I'm getting really jealous because up next, our reporter Kaylee also gets to taste some delicious food at the European Festival. the European Festival is being held at Swangard Stadium here in Burnaby. Other events that have happened at the stadium are, of course, Whitecap Soccer, FIFA Women's World Cup and BC Summer Games, just to make a few. And here today, the European culture is teaching Canadians about art, music, food and, of course, dance. <laughs> cabbage rolls with lean beef and white rice and then we have handmade pierogies. We have uh, which were called kulmeni but we would call them um, Ukrainian meat pierogies. Uh, we've got homemade pulled pork, we've got Ukrainian sausage and then we've got hot dogs for the kids. <laughs> festival here today. Oh, it's lovely. The best uh, ever, whatever been in. Well, we did a performance for the Armenian group, so we are glad that that's over. And now we're enjoying the ambiance, the food, the other performances, the sunshine. It's terrific. So tell us, uh, tell me about the dancing that you're going to be doing today. So um, it's a dance that's um, about like with all of our groups, and yeah. these are like our noshnyas, as we call it. So the it's costume? like yeah. So um, so this is a skirt and our alpanke and our yeah. shoes and yeah. Well this year uh, we have been actually attending this festival for the last five years and uh, th this time we wanted to uh, introduce the Anatolian uh, musical instruments. So uh, we are uh, introducing a very traditional instrument which is called balama saz. What kind of food do you guys cook? Well, Germany like if I'm speaking of the sausage point of view, and I, Germany is very famous for their sausages, and uh, it comes way back when uh, they have a purity law for the sausages, exactly that what they have for the beer. So we use only meat, spices, and water. So it's a very, very clean, clean sausage, and also through the history of Germany, I mean, there's over 1,500 different types of sausages. So every region has a different type, you know, and that's, I think that's what Germany is really, really named for, for the high, high quality and the presentation and the goodness of the product. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day here at Swangard Stadium in Burnaby, and thousands of people have come to visit the 2012 European Festival. This is just one more ethnic celebration that adds to Metro Vancouver's multiculturalism. And today, it was Europe's turn to show their pride. And these German pretzels are absolutely delicious. For Local Connection, I'm Kaylee Miller. Thanks, Kaylee. I don't know if you realize, but you're making me so hungry right now. Me too. Right now, we are hanging out with Patrick from the Falls Creek Racing Canoe Club. Patrick, where are we right now? We're, we're in one of our, our two boathouses right now, and this is where we store some of our equipment. So explain to us, what is the main difference between a kayak and a canoe? Well, a canoe is more open than the kayak. A kayak it can be enclosed where the person is right in the kayak and is enclosed. This is an Olympic class kayak. It's around 16 feet long. And I'll just pull it out. And Dominic, just hold that. Oh, wow, this is very light. Yeah, it's made of graphite. And uh, this, this boat is very, very fast. It is a, uh, and of course, the faster they are, the less stable they are. I want to point out that uh, these boats, this is owned by the club, and all members of the club can get checked out in these clubs, they can train, and once they have been uh, trained in these boats, they can just take them out and train them. The Falls Creek Racing Canoe Club is a multi-discipline paddling club. Um, we have paddlers who compete in dragon boat, outrigger, canoe and kayak. And it's um, predominantly a racing club, people who want to train and race. 
The club has been around for 27 years. It was founded in 1985. We now have 375 full-time members in addition to 20 Dragon Boat teams who practice out of here. That translates to about 300 to 400,000 person hours of recreation that comes out of this canoe club in conjunction with the Falls Creek Community Centre. The club also has Canoe Kids Day Camp in which young children are coached by Olympians, inspiring them to perhaps be in the next Olympic generation. The club is not only for kids, but also for adults and even seniors in their 90s. There are a lot of teams that stay here, and there's been a high school team that stayed here for years and years, and they said it's because of the role models, the people who have gone to the Olympics, who have competed at the Worlds, and the teachers and the organizers of those programs feel really strongly about the Falls Creek Racing Canoe Club because of the mentoring that those kids get and the um, things that they can aspire to. Thank you, Tori and Patrick. It has been a lot of fun here at the Falls Creek Racing Canoe Club, and there's more to come after the break. Thank you! Also after the break... Progress on this. An exclusive interview with the mayor of Vancouver. Late night. And buckle up, it's time to glide through the sky. Stay tuned. Local Connection will be right back. Triste sartaccio, fila fila ma che vuoi fila, senza punta lago non può andare. Welcome back to Local Connection. We are here relaxing and enjoying a stroll on Falls Creek. Yes, we are, but Dominique, life isn't always this easy for a lot of people. It can be a real balancing act for many of us, but we don't always have to do it while being in the public eye. Up next, Clayton Timko gets in touch with the man known as the face of Vancouver. Running one of the world's most beautiful and livable cities comes with its share of responsibility and organization. We're about to get exclusive access here at City Hall with the mayor of Vancouver, the Honorable Gregor Robertson. Whether it's learning about gardening with school children or doing media interviews, every day is different for Gregor Robertson. But one thing he wants to keep the same is his dedication to being the people's mayor. I work really hard to be out and about and available and accessible and to do lots of listening, lots of connecting with people and hearing what's, what's happening in their lives. There is no typical day, but there's a, an amazing variety of activity from stuff at City Hall. Some days are more City Hall oriented at council meetings, uh, public hearings, uh, having meetings with the team here to figure out our next moves. And um, we're doing, we have very ambitious goals for our city. Gregor's current goal is to make Vancouver the greenest city in the world by 2020 through 15 outlined targets that range from transportation goals to clean air and water. But with such lofty ambitions comes its share of criticism. Try and take from it something constructive, uh, something to, to factor into a decision, a next step. So, uh, you know, you just, you have to roll with it. I, I think my family actually has more trouble with it than I do. I, I just have kind of thick skin and, and it is what it is. It comes with the job. It's not so pleasant for, uh, for my family. They, they tend to take it more personally. After spending a decade making a difference in the organic juice industry, Gregor longed to make a difference with what was going on in his own city. And so in 2005, an exciting new career path was formed. Uh, for me, it actually was a logical transition into public service and uh, looking at the health of a city, looking at the health of, uh, of everyone who lives here, the health of our economy locally, and, uh, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can to serve that. But how does he deal with some feeling Vancouver is a no-fun city, as well as late-night bus service ending too early? I think we've totally uh, done away with the no-fun city label. We've, we've really become a fun city in recent years. I think the Olympics were the, the absolute ending of that. 
it's a fine balance, just making sure we, we make progress on this. Uh, it, fun isn't just about uh, late night binging, so I, I think we've got we, we to be careful how we approach it. We want to make sure there's responsible partying. I've been pushing hard to get late night SkyTrain and bus service. We, we have a real challenge, particularly from the Granville Entertainment District late at night. We're working on it. There's still room for uh, improvement for sure and, uh, and hopefully TransLink can make it possible to have some late night trains happening. With the pressure that can come from such a high profile position, Gregor still manages to enjoy his job today as much as when he first started. It's an incredible honour to be the Mayor of Vancouver and I, I remember once uh, Bill Clinton came to town and gave a talk and it was right when I was um, uh, thinking of running for mayor actually and he said uh, at the beginning of his speech in, uh, in Vancouver he said, you know, being the Va Mayor of Vancouver is probably the best job in the world and, and I thought, you know, he's probably right. For Local Connection, I'm Clayton Timko. Thanks, Clayton. Well, Gregor isn't the only local celebrity we have on our show today. Up next, he's played with Chaos, Nelly Furtado, been on Jay Leno, and now he's on Local Connection. And yes, his name is Ross Klein. Our very own reporter, Suzanne Caboli, has his story. Russ Klein, a Winnipeg native, is a successful and gifted guitarist who plays with the classic reggae band, Mostly Marley. He has worked alongside some of the most successful artists and co-written and produced pieces that have won him platinum and gold records. I joined Mostly Marley about five years ago. Uh, I had gotten off the road uh, nine years of playing with uh, Chaos and out of that I got a tour with Nelly Furtado as well. That goes back to learning from my father. Uh, he played professionally for a long time. He also went to the same school that I ended up going to, which was Grant McEwen in Edmonton. And throughout the years, his inspiration has come from some of the greatest guitarists. I would say George Benson and John McLaughlin, just on the jazz side of things. Um, you know, I try to play as much of their style as I can because they're difficult artists to transcribe. You formed successfully a three-member band, Salvador Dream in the 90s, uh, in which you were the lead guitarist. Um, you were later signed by Warner Music. So tell me about the most memorable moment when that happened, when you first got signed, how did that feel? It was great. I mean, there's nothing like uh, having your own group and being able to express your own creativity with the guys that you like playing with. Most of the success that I've had uh, is as a co-writer, and a lot of the songs I did with uh, Chaos when I was with him for about nine years and uh, I co-wrote on all four of his records or well he has five I think so five. If you would like to become a professional guitarist right. like myself <laughs> that's right Russ has some advice for you <laughs> for new guitar players uh, I guess the main thing is is that don't get frustrated you know, because it's not the easiest uh, instrument to start with. <laughs> As his music career progresses, his passion to entertain audiences continues. The more I, I want to make music that, uh, you know, reaches people at some level. And so that's a lifelong study and music is an infinite process. Looks like I need some more practice, but thankfully I'm in good hands with Russ Klein, guitarist for Mostly Marley. They're a classic reggae band and they'll be playing Sundays at the Rusty Gull and other places. So thank you very much, Russ. I'm Susan Caboli reporting for Local Connection. Thanks, Susan. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to reach those heights. Don't you think, Maria? 
Oh, definitely. I personally think dedication is one of the main keys to success. But you know what else it takes to get to great heights? No. You guessed it. An airplane. And up next, I get up in a plane, but don't necessarily land with it. Up next, we go to Abbotsford, and I spread my wings. Stay tuned. Local Connection will be right back. Welcome back to Local Connection. Today we are in Falls Creek enjoying the sun and the water. I gotta tell you, Maria, I'm falling in love with this place. Well, speaking of falling, up next, I fall. No, literally. Hello everybody, today's a very exciting slash scary day for me. I'm about to do something that most of us have never done in our lifetime. Yep, that's right, you guessed it. I'm gonna jump out of a plane. I'm here with Jesse, Chief Instructor in Skydive Vancouver, located in Abbotsford, BC. So Jesse, what's going to happen today? Well, we're going to make a skydive. So uh, quite soon here, we're going to put you in a harness. I'll get myself a parachute. We're going to go out, get in our uh, Cessna 206, climb up to about 10,500 feet. And then we'll jump out, where it'll take us about 10 seconds to accelerate to 200 kilometers an hour. We'll go 200 kilometers an hour for the next four to 5,000 feet. And then I'll open up the parachute and I'll have you drive the canopy around for us for about four or five minutes and we'll land uh, right there in that pea gravel pit. Did I just hear 10,000 feet and 200 kilometers per hour? Even though my nerves were starting to rush, I still went ahead and got in my jumpsuit. I'm contemplating going and buying a pair of diapers. Soon afterwards, Debbie, an instructor at Skydive Vancouver, gave me a training session to get me ready for my jump. Let your legs fold back there. You want to arch your body, so try and kick yourself in the butt with your feet there. You should feel it right across here and right here. Shoulders back, head back. When they tap you on the shoulders, then you're going to put your arms out into that free fall position. I don't think I'm the only one who can get trained for their first jump. You can too. For those who are interested in having their first skydiving experience, explain what is a tandem skydive. Uh, well, basically it's where you make uh, your first jump and it's with an instructor like myself. So I'm there to walk you through the whole experience and make it uh, something very enjoyable. How many jumps have you done in total? I've got almost 9,000 skydives now. 9,000 jumps? That sure was reassuring to hear. My nerves were calmed, and it was time to enjoy the plane ride to the skies. A wave of goodbye and an adventure to a height of 10,000 feet had begun. By the time we had reached 10,000 feet, I was not very happy. But I was determined, and the time to jump had been reached. I want to break free amazing flight, I even had the chance to maneuver the canopy. A gentle flight towards the ground. Mission accomplished. That was amazing, that was absolutely unreal. I can't believe I was even scared. It was just like floating, and if you'd like to have your own skydiving experience, 
you should really do it. So check out the website below. Thank you for watching. I'm Maria Arias Roslo for Local Connection. Mid Dominique, that was a lot of fun, and as you can tell, I was pretty pumped. You should definitely try it. For sure, Maria. Obviously, you're not afraid of anything, but up next, I go in the streets and find out what you are afraid of. I'm here in Kisilano Beach to find out what you're most afraid of. Oh, probably dying because I don't know what's gonna happen after. Maybe bungee jumping, that's scarier than skydiving. Heights? Why? I don't like the fall. I don't know. I'm just afraid of heights. It freaks me out. Who are you? So what are you most afraid of? Uh, I'd probably have to say seaweed. Sunburn. Tornadoes. I'm afraid of needles. Aliens. Monsters. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of getting burnt by barbecues. Oh. <laughs> oh, police. And hey, what about you? Police too. <laughs> Why police? <laughs> are you hiding something? Uh, maybe. <laughs> snakes. Snakes. Why? Tell me why. Because they like slither and they're gross. Oh, I'm afraid of snakes. Snakes, don't, tell yeah, me why. I don't like snakes. They're they so have, nice. No, they have beady eyes and that tongue that juts out all the time. Spiders. Spiders, maybe. Spiders? Yeah, I'm not a first spider, man, but I'm a first spider. <laughs> I'm afraid of television. Oh, yeah? yeah. Why? Yeah. Tell me why. <laughs> I don't know, because I'm a shy person. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> To be lonely. To be lonely, huh? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's, that's my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm not afraid of from anything. Oh, no? Yeah. Not anything. I'm brave heart. Oh, you're brave. <laughs> what are you most afraid of? I'm afraid of becoming blind. Oh, why? There's too much to see in the world. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> well, that was some scary stuff, but I'm afraid now. Time is over. For Local Connection, I'm Dominique Armand. Well, Dominique, I have to say, I don't think I'm afraid of any of those things. Come on, Maria, there must be something that you're afraid of. Well, I'm afraid you're going to lose this race. We'll see. We welcome your feedback. If there's a story you would like to see, you can leave us a message on our Facebook page. And make sure to visit our YouTube channel. For Local Connection, I'm Maria arias Rosal. And I'm Dominique Armand. Let's get this race going. Let's go. Yep. Ready, set.